evening, everyone. Uh, good evening, and a very, very warm welcome to Carlow Free Church. It's so, so good to see you here. Uh, thank you to everyone who's come along tonight, uh, those of you from our community and those of you who've come uh, from further afield. It's a huge privilege to welcome you as we gather uh, for our Easter praise night. Um, some people will be joining us online, so we welcome you as well, uh, and we pray that you'd be blessed and encouraged as we have this time together. Um, if we've not met, met before, my name is Thomas Davis, and I'm the minister here in Carloway, and it's a massive privilege to welcome you as we come together. Uh, tonight's a very special night because uh, we uh, are, are sharing this evening with our dear friends from the High Free Church in Stornoway, uh, and uh, we're so delighted to have the singers and musicians from their place group leading the first half of the evening, and then we'll have the Carloway uh, place band for the second half of the evening. Most of our evening we'll be singing, um, and we'll just uh, punctuate it with uh, a short prayer, a short reading, and a very short talk uh, at the end of the time together. But the main purpose uh, tonight is to sing praise together, because Jesus is risen, which is amazing, and we want to rejoice in that wonderful reality that changes everything uh, for us as individuals and for the whole universe. So we have so much reason for joy, and we're delighted that we can come together uh, to worship uh, in Jesus' name. So a very, very warm welcome to you all. As I said, we're delighted to be joined by uh, the singers and musicians from the High Three. So I'm going to invite them to come forward. They're going to take us through uh, the first few songs. Most of the songs we'll stand up for, but we will sit down for one or two uh, as we go through the evening so that people's legs don't get too tired. Uh, we'll give the musicians uh, a chance uh, to come up uh, and get themselves all set. Uh, after maybe a couple of songs, uh, I'll get them all to introduce themselves, um, but I won't embarrass them just yet. Uh, I'll wait until uh, we've got through the first couple. Uh, all our songs tonight are just rejoicing in the fact that Jesus has risen. Claim uh, and it's where all our hope and joy is found. So all of the songs are pointing us towards this great reality. Uh, the words are going to be on the screen, so it'll be easy for you to follow along. Just uh, to note that, unfortunately, this screen on the side is broken. The cable under the floor is damaged, uh, and we're just awaiting a part to come from Germany to be able to fix it. Um, so if you can see the big screen, use the big screen. If you need to use that side one, uh, you can use it as well. Um, if you can't see both screens, Google the lyrics on your phone, and you'll be able to sing along. We're going to start uh, with the wonderful hymn, See What a Morning. Um, which takes us right back 2,000 years to that amazing Lord's Day morning as a new week began and as a whole new hope became a reality for us all. So uh, I'll invite the musicians to lead us and we'll stand and sing to you. <coughs>
Thank you. Um, the next song we're going to sing uh, is uh, called Hymn of the Saviour. I'm going to let you sit down for this one. I'm just warming you up. Uh, by the end, you'll understand everything. Um, but uh, this is, again, beautiful words uh, just pointing us to the great reality of the fact that Jesus came, died, rose again, all to be our King. So we'll sing these two words. <laughs> Beautiful, thank you very, very much indeed. We're going to stand to sing another two songs now. Uh, the first one is one that uh, just catapults me straight back to the 90s, because I remember singing this as a teenager. Uh, a great tune, um, just speaking of, uh, of Christ fulfilling all that God promised uh, in, uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, and then after that, we'll sing uh, a hymn, Rescuer, uh, again speaking of, of really what Jesus' mission was all about. Uh, after we sing these uh, two songs, I'm going to invite uh, Callum Smith uh, to come and lead us in prayer, but we'll, sta we'll stand and we'll sing these together.
Brilliant. So good. I love the hey. That was very good. <laughs> Excellent. Did you Elijah? I haven't sung that since the YM in the late 90s. I was like a redhead girl, I realized. <laughs> I'm delighted to ask Colin Murdo to come forward uh, and lead us in prayer uh, as we just um, thank our Saviour for everything that he's done. Our gracious Lord in heaven, we do thank you for the joy that it is in praising your name. For it's in the name of every name, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lord, who is risen. And we rejoice in that glorious hope, that glorious grace that he came for sinners such as we are to give his life. And as we think of Calvary and all that that means, you know, it reminds us of the darkness of this world, darkness we're reminded of so often. See that passes, Lord, we hear of tragedy and sorrow, near and far. 
for the entirety of the Gospels. A glorious message that was a uh, that calls people to come and find rest, to find salvation, to find hope in a loving and a gracious Savior. And so, Lord, we rejoice in you this night. We rejoice in this time together. You have gathered us from different parts of our communities and islands here and you enable us one to lift up our voices in praise to you. May you bless us and continue to be with us, Lord. Speak to us in the songs we sing, speak to us through the word that we hear, and speak even in the times of silent reflection, Lord, as we just pour out our hearts to you as we well. ask all these things and your blessing over each of us as we look to you, Lord, in your all your glory. And be precious to us more and more. We ask for the forgiveness of our sins in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Callum. Um, well, before uh, we sing the next couple of songs, I want to give Fangy the opportunity to introduce his singers and musicians. Fangy, like me, uh, was in the YM, the BH Youth Group in the 90s. The difference is, Fangy hasn't set his hair since the 90s. <laughs> So please, Fangy, tell us your real name first and then tell us everybody else's real name as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> very good. Excellent. Okay, so um, we're going to sing, uh, they're going to lead us through, through three more songs. This is one that I think many of you know, um, and uh, it's just a kind of classic hymn, but at the same time, it's also magnificent theology, because uh, at the heart of the Christian gospel is the fact that there is saving power in the blood of Jesus Christ. So uh, we're going to stand to sing this wonderful hymn.
Um, as you know, uh, this evening we were taking a collection for the local food bank, and I'm delighted to say that we've raised £350, so thank you so, so much uh, to you all for your generosity in supporting that. Uh, such an important part of helping people in, in the community that we have uh, to work with here today. So thank you so much uh, for your support uh, and generosity. Uh, we're now going to sing a Jewish medley, which I think you're going to have to explain to us. From the old, good old days. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. So we'll let you stay seated for this one, and then we'll have you on your feet for their last song in a moment. Um, but yes, let's, let's sing these fun old good ones.
Changi, they were a lot of fun to play. Yes, so, <laughs> so, I was, I was there too. Uh, so we've now come to the last uh, last song that, uh, that this group of musicians are singing. They're going to lead us in a beautiful hymn, uh, O Church at Eyes, which I think is such a good song for us to sing because it's a great reminder that as we think of the resurrection, as we think of everything that Jesus has done for us, at one level, that makes us stop and marvel at the grace and mercy of God. But at the same time, the reality of the gospel motivates us uh, to press forward as we want to follow and serve and honor Jesus uh, in our lives. So this, uh, this song really does uh, call us to, uh, to, to follow Jesus this week um, and every week of our lives. So we'll stand and sing these wonderful words. Well, do you know, I was going to tell you all to give them a round of applause, but I didn't have to tell you. They were so grateful. So thank you very much. That was just beautiful. And we're so grateful uh, to the musicians and singers from the High Sea uh, for coming uh, and sharing this evening with us and for helping and supporting uh, the great church. Thank you very much. I think we should give them another round of applause. So that was <laughs> well, um, for the second half uh, of the evening, the musicians from Carloway are going to.
leader. So I'll let them come forward and take their places. And while they do that, we're going to read together from God's Word. Uh, and our reading, it's, it's a short reading from Mark chapter 16, verses 1 to 8. This is recording um, the great moment when uh, it was discovered that the tomb was empty. So let me read these verses for you. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as and they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. They said nothing to anyone, but they were filled with fear. Amen. And God has blessed the reading of his word. And a wonderful and amazing account of that morning, that Sunday morning, Lord's Day morning, uh, when the, the disciples were coming to the tomb to see Jesus risen. And I love the fact that the very first thing Jesus says is, do not be alarmed. Do not be alarmed. So we're going to sing on together, and we're going to start, um, first of all, at singing Come People of the Risen King. Uh, I love this hymn because um, that's really what we are as followers of Jesus. We are the people of the Risen King. He is risen, he is king, and we are his. And in that we are going to be with the king that we can ever expect to see in our lives. So, uh, musicians, will lead us. Yeah, you can and then we can go back. Sorry. Oh 
Uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to introduce all our musicians and singers. We have Kirsten on the whistle, playing the whistle of the chord there. Beside that is David, who plays the bass. Uh, David is also our technical engineer, <laughs> comes with a van full of stuff, uh, and is a huge help in getting everything set up. In the corner, we have John uh, on percussion. Uh, then we have David on piano. Uh, so delighted to have David helping us this evening. Uh, we have Grant uh, on guitar, and he is a very interesting uh, expert. Isabel singing and playing the guitar as well. <laughs> <laughs> and behind me, we have Ken, uh, Ken Douglas, uh, who's been new to the island and has been quite a healed by family lately and massively benefited uh, to us being in the island for many years. So uh, these are our musicians, and we're delighted to have them in the evening. We're going to sing two more uh, just now. Uh, we're going to sing, uh, first of all, uh, Christ is Risen. And then after that, we're going to sing Living Waters. We'll just do one statement to the other. Uh, both uh, this hymn, Christ is Risen, again, just pointing us to that great reality uh, of the very first Easter morning. Uh, and Living Waters, uh, a beautiful hymn, uh, speaking so powerfully about how Jesus quenches our thirst and renews our strength. So uh, please stand and we'll just sing before we get together. <coughs>
case that we have killed. And that's crucial for every single one of us here, whether you've been following Jesus for years or whether you're maybe not sure where you stand uh, in terms of faith or whether you're at the moment pretty unsure and, and, and maybe fairly skeptical of it all. <coughs> for those of us who follow Jesus and have been following us for years, um, if you're anything like me, you still feel guilty and you see things in your life that you wish weren't there and you feel frustrated. And the pardon that Jesus gives reminds us that that, that guilt has been washed away and God has said to us, we do not need to feel guilty. God has said we do not want to feel guilty. And we can come to the cross and we can come back to the living waters that Jesus uh, gives to us. We can be washed and cleansed anew by him. And for any you know, here, here who are maybe not sure or, 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 or thinking about um, uh, faith, I mean, I don't know how you feel, but I am sure there are times in your life when you felt guilty. I'm sure there's times in life when um, things have weighed heavily upon you. And maybe you've cured that by distracting yourself and trying to take your mind off it. Many people do that. But you can always niggle away. Maybe you're here this evening feeling conscious of your sin and frustrated by it. And the amazing promise of the, the, promise of the gospel is that all you have to do is come to Jesus, ask him to forgive you, and he will pardon you. Taking away your guilt forever so that your mistakes will be forgotten. And, you know, we live in a culture today where all our mistakes are recorded for us and used against us. The gospel is the complete opposite. Our sins are wiped away. Our guilt is removed. Jesus has come to pardon us. In the second verse, you'll, see, you'll sing the word pride. Now, the, pri the word pride, I think, is a great word for us to think and talk about because in church, we often think that pride is a bad word um, because there are times uh, in the Bible when it will speak about pride as a sin um, that we should uh, seek to, to, to turn away from and to repent of. But we all know as well that the word pride actually has a very positive sense as well. And the confusion arises for us is because we have in English the same word for the negative thing and for the positive thing. In Greek, which is the language that the New Testament was written on, it's different words that are used. And so when it's speaking negatively, the word that we translate pride is, is the word that, that means arrogance. When we think too much of ourselves, when we're only interested in our own success and our ambition, when we look down uh, on others, when we have that kind of um, haughty spirit um, <coughs> that has our nose in the air. We can't say that word pride. That is a negative thing. That's not the thing I want to talk about. We also translate a different New Testament word with the word pride, but we mean pride in a positive sense. And what that word basically means is to have something to boast about. And not boasting in an arrogant way, boasting in the fact that we are just delighted and overjoyed at what has happened in our lives. And I think that's such an important thing for us to remember, that that's what the gospel gives us. The resurrection of Jesus gives us a reason to be proud. Not arrogant, not looking down on others, that's the opposite of what Jesus wanted us to be like. But proud in the sense of having something to boast about, something to sing about, something to smile about. And again, the impact is maybe made clearer when we think of the opposite. It's reminding us that the resurrection means that as Christians, if we are following Jesus or if you become a follower of Jesus, you never, ever need to feel ashamed or embarrassed. About it. And so often we do so often we can feel judged by others. Maybe sometimes we've judged others ourselves. So often we don't want to let two pe people to get too close to us because um, we're so um, insecure about what they'll find when they get to know us more and more. The resurrection just makes all of that unimportant. And knowing Jesus and the power of his blood means that we can forget about all of that and instead have joy and peace and hope and holy pride in the reality that Jesus has come to be our saviour, that he is risen, he is our king, and we are his people. 
But not only can we be proud of what Jesus has done, we can be proud of one another. And in, a, in, in what I hope is a God-honouring way, I am so proud to be here tonight. Because we are here with people from all different churches across the island, from all different locations, all from different backgrounds. And we should be so proud that Jesus has brought us together, that we could be here tonight because we are all overjoyed at the fact that Jesus is our Saviour, He is risen, and He has brought us into His family. So as we sing that about the pride and joy that the Gospel gives us, we can rejoice in all of these realities. So you'll sing the word pardon, you'll sing the word pride, you'll also sing the word pain. And... And of all these words, that's maybe the word that you know and understand more than anything. Everybody in here knows what it's like to feel pain. Some of you um, carry long-term physical pain. Some of you have to fight through pain to get here tonight. Uh, some of you are maybe sitting in pain, waiting for this pain to stop talking. And... All of you know the reality of pain in your heart. Sorrow and sadness, disappointment, frustration, fear, worry, struggle, and grief. All of you know what that pain feels like. And, and, and even the person in here with the worst physical pain. So and that is what Jesus has come to take. That is what Jesus has come to take away. And yes, in this life, we will still experience pain, physical and, and spiritual, external and internal. But Jesus has come with the promise that there will be a day when all pain will be gone and when every tear will be wiped away and it's an amazing reminder that Jesus has come with a heart full of compassion and he's not calling people to himself who are strong and who are capable and who are never struggling he's calling people who are sore and who are stumbling and who know what it's like to feel pain and he went to the cross to take more pain and more agony than I could ever describe and that we could ever imagine all so that we would know the day when we would be with him and all our pain and sorrow would be taken away and the resurrection proves that he's going to keep that promise the resurrection proves that he has conquered death and the whole of Christianity is grounded on that historical fact that the tomb was empty, that Jesus is risen, and that all who trust in him can have hope, and that for all who trust in him, all their pain will be taken away. And I really want to press that into all of your hearts tonight. For those of you who are following Jesus, I just want you to, as we sing these two beautiful songs, this Renew, to be renewed in your love and commitment and thanksgiving to Jesus. And for those of you who are maybe not sure, um, you're maybe, maybe, maybe there but not there in terms of faith, maybe wanting to be a Christian but also hesitant. Um, tonight, tonight, is the time. And Jesus. As much as he loves to hear you sing, he didn't actually bring you here to hear you sing. He brought you here to call you to him. To come and put your trust in him and to know the pardon and the pride and the freedom from pain he brings us to the gospel. And so as we sing these words together, let us all just take a step closer to Jesus. Maybe that will be the hundredth or thousandth or millionth step that you've taken on your journey as a follower of Jesus. Or maybe it'll be your first step. Whatever step it is, Jesus is just delighted that you come to the place. So we're going to sing.
So we're going to stand and sing these beautiful songs together, starting with Psalm 16 from the Sing Psalms version. We're going to sing the first two verses and then the last four. Um, so we'll sing six stanzas together. We'll stand to sing and just stay standing after Psalm 16. We're going to sing Because He Lives. These are the last two songs. This is time to use up all your energy, all your vocal cords, and lift the roof <coughs> as we sing together. <coughs>
thank you to the amazing singers and musicians at Tarawe. Thank you. Father, we just thank you so much. We rejoice that Jesus is here. Amen. So as I said, please help yourself to see a copy. Um, <coughs>